Yo, what's up everybody, it's Tuna. Today's video I wanted to showcase a build which I think is one of the strongest builds currently in Torchlight Infinite and that is on the Frostbitten Gemma. As you can see here, we are hitting very high DPS numbers on the dummy, upwards of 200 billion damage. And it even ramps up to higher numbers. It gets pretty insane honestly, like the, the single target DPS is just absurd. You can see that we're peaking at 445 billion. It's one of the builds that I've seen with the most single target DPS currently in the game by far. Of course there are downsides to it, but the upside is of course that you can deal insane damage, it's relatively cheap, and you can get it going, you know, as soon as you get precise cast on crit, and some other items that of course I'll talk you guys through it. But in general, you know, this is a sort of a showcase showing you guys that you can hit dummy cap 500 billion DPS, and um, yeah, the rework has been very successful, and um, so let's get into it. All right, so I have prepared a uh, planner here on the max roll page, which is basically going to show you guys everything that you need on this build to really pop off. And basically, it's um, it only really requires, you know, like one or two uniques, but it does require some specific stats. But overall, first, we can go through all of the skills. We're going to take uh, damage coming out of, you know, Goddess of Knowledge is going to be our first pick. And we're going to take damage coming out of it into some energy shield. We are an energy shield based build. Into some sealed mana, we're going to need as much of that as possible as we are doing some reservations. And then we're getting some spell damage and plus one spell skill level here at the end. And our, um, you know, our major nodes are going to be winter as well as insight. You know, this is going to give us additional spell damage and a lot of additional frostbite rating and um, you know increased damage to enemies who have that frostbite rating. Next we want to go for Arcanist. Arcanist is going to be providing us a ton of cold damage, energy shield, as well as you know a chance to inflict frostbite which is very important for our build. Some additional cold damage, some energy shield there and then the last rows are very important here. We get some freeze duration so that is a lot of freeze duration that we grab here on the medium talents. Then we got, uh, you know, 15% frostbites inflicted into 30% here. And then we get additional, uh, you know, minus sealed mana, which is important for our, uh, for our auras, of course. And yeah, here is a little bit of, a, you know, skill cost reduction, which offsets some of the downside of inside. So that's pretty good. And then for our major points here, we're going to be taking Frost Bitten, which is going to give us 90% additional damage against frozen enemies. And everything we're going to be encountering pretty much is going to be frozen. And the second one is going to be Extreme Coldness. So your freeze can um, your freeze effects gain an additional effect. So that's every 0.1 seconds, the enemy gets minus 7 cold resistance. And it stacks up to 20 times, meaning they can get minus 140 percent cold resistance which is yeah it's pretty it's pretty insane but of course uh the downside being that if they if they are unfrozen you know if they if they become not frozen then that will uh drop off to zero and you'll have to build that back up but it is pretty fast to build that back up so it's not really a problem at all next we are taking the psychic uh psychic is going to be giving us you know additional dot damage and that kind of stuff some skill duration. Skill duration is very good for this build. We're going to be wanting to get all of the energy shield as possible. And then we're going to be grabbing, uh, grabbing additional damage. And as we previously said, everything that we are um, attacking is going to be frozen. So they are going to be taking additional damage here. And this is like very point efficient, right? Because 72% increased damage from these three nodes. It's very good. And then we want to skip directly to the sealed mana here. We're going to grab that. And then we're going to be grabbing, um, you know, additional damage uh, against cursed enemies, cursed skill radius. And then upon dealing damage to a cursed enemy, there is an 8% chance to paralyze it. And paralyze it makes them take increased damage. So that's really nice. We only need to put one point here, you know, to basically, um, yeah, trigger that paralyze. That's all we want to do. We also want to be putting one point here into this minor talent to, to uh, blind enemies. That's going to make it so that they have a harder time hitting us. Then we will be putting four points into reaping cooldown recovery speed. Reaping uh, is going to be like basically um, giving us a huge burst in damage. And that's how we get to those like very high DPS numbers. That's because we're going to be reaping 
um, a lot of the damage over time that we're inflicting on the enemy, meaning, you know, you're going to be dealing a portion of the damage over time in chunks. And then uh, we want to grab, uh, you know, Affliction Effect. Affliction Effect is more multiplier for the build. So that's really nice. And you're going to be getting additional afflictions inflicted per second, which is pretty cool. And then that as well will give them less resistances as well as more afflictions inflicted per second. So that's pretty nice. And then for the for the major notables, you'll get affliction, which is going to be giving you 10 plus affliction inflicted per second and 30% additional affliction effect, meaning, you know, all of your increased affliction effect um, that you're getting from like nodes and from gear and stuff like that. It's going to be multiplied by 1.3, so that's pretty nice. And then Reaping Purification is going to settle 80% of the remaining total damage when Reaping. And Reaping removes all the down damage from the target. So that's kind of like how you're able to deal damage in chunks. This is going to be, you know, basically removing all the damage over time that you have stacked up on the enemy, but will deal 80% of that in a chunk as, far, as long as you have Reaped, right? So whenever you Reap, that's going to deal a huge chunk of damage. So this less feels like a damage over time build and rather feels like, you know, like a build where you're stacking up certain amounts of um, damage over time on the enemy. There's going to be an, an initial ramp up time. And then when you start reaping, then you'll deal, you know, huge chunks and huge bursts of damage to the enemy. All right. So for your hero traits, you're going to be just clicking uh, Blizzard Incarnation into Snowy Embrace, into Glacial Knight, and your last two will be Frost Tides and both, uh, Bone Piercing Frost. However, you can play around with these last two, as you know, you'll find that you can use like either or of them. But yeah, Frost Tides plus Bone Piercing Frost is what I recommend. And then you, for your Hero Relic, you want to have minus one second Cold Pulse Interval with, um, you know, the four, uh, for every time an enemy is frozen, deal 10% additional damage uh, to them, right? That, that you would definitely want two of these uh, on your hero relic whereas on your hero memories you're just going to be getting a cold pu uh, cold pulse and flicks frostbite on target with 16 frostbite rating and the movement speed wherever possible so make sure you get t1 on the first one and then the movement speed uh, get get as much of that as possible now to talk about the divinity slates a little bit as well as the unique interaction with the ice drinker's cage this is really important because the ice drinker's cage is an item that gives you an insane amount of damage in that it gives you the additional stacks of cage when inflicting a freeze and has an interval of one second, right? But you can stack this up to 13 times when you corrode it to T0. What this does is it gives you a buff called cage and this gives you 2% additional cold damage and minus 1% additional erosion damage taken as well as minus 2% additional movement speed and it stacks up to 50 times. So basically what that means is that you can get 100% additional cold damage as long as you've inflicted freezes recently. However, it also gives you negative 100% additional movement speed. So that's a huge downside from an item that gives you a massive upside as well. You're getting so much damage from this that it's very, very hard to pass up. And since you're not using your main skill, you are a cast on crit build, you know, the minus three main skill level is, um, is basically like, it doesn't matter at all. And then uh, on top of that, you're getting, you know, additional freeze duration on the enemy and all of that good stuff you know with energy shield and whatnot so how do you mitigate this downside this is really important that you get two divinity slates with movement speed bonuses are also applied to the cooldown recovery um speed of mobility skills you want to have two of those it's very very important because you know if you don't have that your character is basically going to be a snail what you'll do with this character is you're going to be spamming you know whirlwind you'll just have you'll just spam but right click you'll hold that down and then you're going to be spamming a speed phantom to move around the map. And yeah, you want to get as much cooldown recovery speed to your mobility skills as possible. So two corners of divinity with this are the very bare minimum that you want on this character. Now for the rest of the divinity slates, you want to get a pedigree with ideally versatile. That is because versatile is going to be giving us additional damage for every skill, attack skill used recently. And since we are going to be using... Uh, you know, Whirlwind, we are going to be using attack skills, and that's going to give you also additional spell damage stacking up to a certain amount of times. So that's basically, it's going to give you a ton more damage, and it's going to synergize really well, because we will be casting Whirlwind, and in general, it's going to give you a, a lot of additional spell damage, thanks to that. And then the stats that you want to get on there is, you know, basically whatever, anything that's good for your build, like any damage and that sort of stuff is nice on there, on the pedigree as well. But of course, you do want Versatile. 
And the two, um, you know, corners of divinity, of course, need the movement speed bonuses on there. And then one of them has a defensive modifier. You still blinded enemies uh, are unable to use critical strikes, which, you know, we put a point into blind on our skill talent trees, you know, uh, and then we go for the second corner of divinity, which is going to give us a blur as well. So that's really nice. So you gain blur every time you consume 100 mana and blur makes you, you know, a little bit faster as well as a little bit more evasive. So that's pretty good to get on the corner of divinity as well. Then you want to get a Fallen Starlight with minus 3 sealed mana. So you're going to need the sealed mana because you need a total of minus 6 on your slates. So get a Fallen Starlight with minus 3 sealed mana. And then 2 Goddess of Deception slates. You know, you can additionally like um, get the minus 3 sealed mana on these. So you'll get 2 of them on there. However, you know, you got to make sure that you have at least 2 minus 3 sealed mana slates. And then um, additional stats that you can get are Skill Duration. Skill Duration is going to give you a ton of extra damage. Additional damage against Cursed Enemies. And then plus one all skill level with skill duration, Terra, uh, recovery speed, as well as, you know, potentially getting a defensive mod like energy shield charge cannot be interrupted. However, since you are going to be using force start and defensive layers, that won't be too much of an issue. All right, so let's talk through the gear a little bit because, uh, you know, there are some affixes on this and I'm going to sort of explain the affix priority on these items. And, you know, the affixes that are in T0 are, of course, going to be the, the highest priority affixes on these items. And then the rest are just going to be like resistances and all that kind of stuff to fill out our character and energy shield wherever possible. So on the helmet, you definitely want to have a long night sorcerer's mask. The minus one focus blessing doesn't affect this at all. And then you're going to want to be getting as much energy shield on that as possible. A T0 max Terra charge stack if possible with affliction effect and resistances. Now, as previously mentioned, the ice drinker's cage, you definitely want to have that corroded to T0 to get additional stacks of cage. Where, if possible, right? Of course. And then for the amulet, you want to have a shaman's amulet because it gives you Terra charge recovery speed, and then you want to be getting getting a T zero cold skill level on that with as much energy shield, armor, and of course reaps um, damage as well, and resistances. For the gloves, you can get a plus two Elder Sage uh, long gloves. You know it's going to give you plus two spell skill level as well as a ton of energy shield, and then you can fill out the rest of your resistances and the reap mod as well, if you can fit it. For your belt, you want to get a prefix skill duration. As you said previously, skill duration is going to definitely increase your damage. And then here you can also grab energy shield, armor, erosion resistance, resistance, as well as reaps as possible. The boots will be the King's Boon boots. You don't specifically need these to be corroded to D0. You know, you don't need the additional dot damage taken. If you don't have this, though, you got to be mindful that you are going to be taking additional uh, dot damage. But if you get this in T0, it's going to be negative 10 instead. But you can also get, you know, uh, the movement speed corroded or the reap mod corroded as well. It's totally up to you uh, which one you get corroded. But yeah, I opted for the minus 10% dot damage taken because... It is a more defensive option, so it's definitely something to get or uh, look for, of course. But, you know, um, buy whichever ones you think are uh, better. Reaps is going to give you more damage. Movement speed is going to give you more cooldown recovery speed for your travel skill and all that kind of stuff. So that is up to you what you get on those. Now, the rings are going to fill out a lot of our resistances as well. You know, your protection ring gives you 10%. All elemental resistance implicit uh, and then you're gonna get some energy shield some armor some spell damage as well as you know t0 reaping cooldown recovery speed that one is huge you definitely want to have uh, as much reaping cooldown recovery speed as possible and then affliction effect uh, because it's going to be a more multiplier for your damage over time and then resistances as well and the second ring is going to be sort of what the first ring is as well with t0 reaping cooldown recovery speed some spell damage, energy shield, armor, as well as resistances. Now the weapon is um, pretty insane, honestly. You can get some pretty crazy affixes on your weapons. The weapon base itself doesn't matter at all, so don't worry too much. Uh, but yeah, you can get plus four skill levels here, and you can even get that to T0. But there are some pretty insane prefixes as well, like additional spell damage with minus additional cast speed. But since we're not casting anything, this is not a downside at all. So it's just going to be 69% additional spell damage. Then you can get percent increased spell damage. And your suffixes are going to be T0 additional damage against frozen enemies. Curse effect as well as skill radius. Skill radius is going to be huge. You definitely want to have skill radius because it's going to increase your whirlwind. 
radius as well as you know your um your frost terra uh, radius which is pretty nice so i get that get that on your staff don't don't skimp out on that for sure this one was one that you want all right so for your skills um these are going to be pretty important uh to put them in the in, in the place that i've put them you know you're going to put whirlwind in there with harden it's going to make you a little bit tankier and guard as well and then reaping agony because you know we're going to be wanting to reap as much as possible so yeah getting reaping agony on there as well and then you have a speed phantom this is basically going to be the only way that you'll be able to move around the map because you are going to be a snail uh thanks to the body armor here giving you minus 100 percent additional movement speed right so speed phantom in combination with the movement speed uh cooldown recovery that you have from here you know you're gonna have a very short cooldown on that you're gonna want to you know link that to magic dash as well as cooldown reduction and quick mobility then our mana boil is going to be on rhythm, so you won't have to like ever click that or worry about it. Uh, it's going to be linked to well fought battle and mania. And then frost shield will give you, you know, negative damage taken, which is going to be negative physical damage and negative fire damage taken. And it's also going to be restarting your energy shield recharge because of defensive layers linked to it. And then you want to have uh, rhythm as well as reaping agony on that as well. So reaping agony is because when the enemies hit you, you know, it's going to deal spell cold damage to them. So every time they hit you, they're going to get reaped as well. Then we'll use Star Stalker, which has just been introduced this season. That's those projectiles that you see flying around, basically. Then you'll link them to rhythm, mania, and a grade of multiple projectiles. In your aura slots, you're going to, go, you're going to want one trigger on critical strike. And that's going to be linked to biting cold seal conversion and then you'll have additional auras like precise deep pain as well as precise steadfast so steadfast gives you a ton of armor and deep pain is going to give you a lot more damage over time and those are going to be reserved all on your life whereas you know we're going to be reserving auras also on your mana and that's going to be precise frigid domain with precise energy fortress uh, elemental amplification this one doesn't have to be precise neither does ice imbue but you definitely want that and then a magical source as well to give you some mana regeneration and this one of course you'll have to like level up yourself you can always down level it as well back to one to find out the perfect level to keep it at where your spells are casting and you're just having pretty much a good time so yeah and then of course this is going to be our main skill it's going to be precise trigger on critical strike of course this has to be precise it's really really important and that's going to be linked to frost terra that's your main damaging skill and then you'll have speed up formation control spell cataclysm as well as pain amplification so these are just going to be more multipliers for your main skill and then your packs you can just choose whatever you want really it's up to you but most importantly your candles you want to have the you know increased damage skill area as well as movement speed for every enemy defeated recently you want to have two of those because as we previously mentioned you know we're going to be a snail so the more movement speed we have the faster the cooldown of speed phantom is and yeah you'll definitely want two of them and another mod that you can look for is max terra quantity as well plus one but getting them in combination with the you know the increased damage area and movement speed for enemy for enemies defeated recently is going to be uh, pretty hard to find so yeah definitely prioritize that one over the terra but if you can get the terra on top of that that's pretty cool now another thing to mention is that for you know general generally mapping you can also use an eternity amulet eternity is insane obviously and it's going to give you an insane amount of area as well as damage um you know defense and movement speed as well and the movement speed is going to make your speed phantom faster and all that kind of stuff so if it was up to me i would probably use an eternity here over this but this is showing you basically like the best amulet that you can have for um you know single target and that kind of stuff but yeah since you don't have any sealed mana on your amulet you can literally just put an eternity in and just blast right so yeah eternity is probably the go here for sure all right so what we're going to be showcasing here is a run through t8.4 and that was the current card deck that i was using and yeah that is going to be basically showcasing what it looks like to run this map this build in very juicy maps we're putting um you know nether realm resonance on there and then we're going to be running that with all the juice and compasses that we can to get the most out of our uh, maps. So getting God of War on your, you know, in your beacons is going to be pretty cool because that increases the speed at which you will be able to trigger your speed phantom. As you can see here, because of those increased area, increased speed and damage candles that we have, we're basically getting crazy area and the explosions are happening all over the screen and we're able to blink like basically every 
a half a second so like you know of course the downside of the movement speed that we're getting from the chest is pretty bad but because we're getting so much extra extra movement speed from the candles as well as in general um you know the clear speed that we have with the explosions from itmu and all that kind of stuff you are going to be flying on the map and because the aoe is so big you won't really have to ever aim and do that kind of stuff and everything is going to be frozen so defensively you are pretty tanky as well as the fact that you have like a 9000 energy shield and you know cap resistances and all that kind of good stuff yeah on top of everything being frozen and you dealing an insane amount of damage um you are pretty decently fast and pretty decently tanky so that's what i think makes this build one of the best if not the best build currently in torchlight infinite and it's something that i wanted to showcase for you guys and uh, yeah i hope you have enjoyed the showcase and it has explained to you guys how to build this character and has motivated you guys to build this character and of course i definitely want to thank my friend uh, flack for sending me over the footage and you know for taking the time to explain the build to me and show it to me and all that kind of good stuff so thank you very much flack for putting this together and showcasing the build for us today and yep thank you very much for watching everybody i hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out.